my name is Claire. I'm the founder of Student Art DH Smarter DA. We have a lot to study today about the panoramic radiograph landmarks. Just amendable today. Let's go. Number one is this guy over here, this protruded part, this rounded part. This is either the condyle or the coronoid process. Which one do you think it is? The answer is the condyle. The condyle is the area that rubs against this uh, temporal bone. Together, they form the TMJ. Okay, so this part towards the edges of the radiograph is the condyle versus um, the coronal process is going to be actually a structure that's going to be towards more the midline. This is number six over here, and this one is over here. I already giving you the answer to number six, but this is how I remember it. Next, number two is this one. What is this? This area, I mean, the patient is not having any cancer or, you know, there's no abnormalities here, but this area looks lighter and there's a weird line. Well, this line is the ghost image of the actual mandible. So those bony structures, when they are taken with the panoramic x-ray, can also be projected as a secondary image or also close, uh, called the shadow, and that is called the ghost image. So what you see here is the ghost image. I think ghost image, we are already um, studied it in terms of earrings, you know, then you'll see blurry and higher up on the other side, but ghost image also is about, you know, the spine and also the mandible. Now, number three, we have this area. This area is the angle of the mandible. What is this called? The vertical part is called the ramus and the horizontal part is called the body. So this part that joins them together is just simply called the angle and you see number three over here. Number four indicates this little area. This area you see here on our skull, this is called the external oblique ridge. And this is this opaque, meaning the lighter area on your radiograph here. Number five, number five, I brought this special image because I want you to first see this. Are those little dots a little more radio lucid, meaning dark? Yes, they are because those are opening. Opening, opening, we also call them for amen. And those are where the veins, the blood vessel, and the nerve come out of. And those areas usually are below the premolars between the second, first and second, or just below the second premolar. It depends on the person's anatomy. But you can see those two areas are darker. And I highlight it here over here as well. As you can see, this little dot. So if you have an injection and you want to do a mental block, you want to anesthetize the front teeth but only the outside, this is where you would um, target. All right, number six. Number six is this area. So it's a little difficult to see. And I just want you to just kind of do this. Do you see this area? Let's look at this part, this area. We already talked about this. This is the coronoid process. Not too confused with the condyle that we talked already about. This is again towards the midline. And one way to see it is if you locate the condyle, you can just go a little below and towards the midline to find this. Another good answer for those number six area would also be maybe the lateral border of the maxillary sinus. You know, but um, here I wanted just to highlight this area, this coronoid process. Okay, almost there, number seven. Number seven is this. Do you see this seven? This is called the sigmoid notch. So this is just between this and this. Okay, this dipping part. So just call it sigmoid notch and just take the S and think about the curve, okay? Curves like this, like you would have in your conda and your coronoid process. So I think you can remember this now, it's called sigmoid notch. And the last part is number eight. I am highlighting this area. Do you see that this entire area is a little darker? Again, radiolucent. Well, this area is um, darker because you have the veins, the blood vessels, and the nerves coming in. This is called the mandibular canal. 
because this area is not filled with bone or any dense um, soft tissues, it's going to look a little darker on your radiograph. And this canal, as you can see, come actually um, it goes in from this little foramen, which is again an opening, and come down all the way here. And they're going to exit through this hole that we looked at already. It is called the mental foramen. So they come out of this and then they continue here providing some anterior teeth. Only the outside though, not the actual teeth, but the tissues on the outside. And as you can see here, those nerve veins and uh, blood vessels, they are connected to the teeth. Therefore, when you want to anesthetize a patient because a um, patient has sensitivity here to the molars, well, you would actually inject them over here. This is the target area, so then you can anesthetize the whole area here and those little branches that in innervates the molars. And um, I didn't have it here because it was just impossible to put it on the skull because we can't see through it. But if we were going to see through it, the foramen would be here and the canal would be somewhere around here and come out of this mental foramen. Does that make sense? I hope we learned a lot about the panoramic radiograph landmarks, especially of the mandible. You have part one, which was, you know, the sinus, you know, some other structures. And let's jump now to number three, which is gonna be even more structures. Thank you.